Hi, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Eric Jones, and today we are here at the uh, historical Riverside Church. It's a beautiful church here. And today what's going on here is their event, their fine art show. And we're going to be covering some of the artists as well as um, the, the coordinator here at the event to talk about what's going on here. So I want you to sit back, relax, enjoy the show. Hi, Mr. Ness, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you today? So, um, I see you have some new pieces from what I'm told. And this piece here, what is this piece here? This piece, I love it. What is this piece here? Well, the title of this particular piece is Tao Mangaluka. It's a beaded ceremonial dance piece. Mm -hmm. All right, it was inspired through 15th century Benin. They used to use a lot of cowrie seeds and ratvia, but in this particular case, I use ceramic beadwork and clay to make a very imposing figure that really works wonderful as an art piece in an entryway, a welcoming piece. As you can see now, I don't know if you're familiar with my work, but a few years back I was just using a lot of muted tones. And what's making my work work a lot better now and making it really, really different is the fact that I've incorporated a lot of color in the work as well as texture. This particular piece here, named Husani, it's a, uh, it's a tribal image of a male warrior. But even more than that, you know, like I'm using a lot of uh, what I call stylized scarification. You can feel it the texture so as a three-dimensional piece it works well visually but it, it really works well you know when you touch it and and feel what this piece is actually about there's a lot of power in this piece I use a lot of uh, traditional Nubian features with cheekbones and protruding lips and haunch shoulders and, and things of that nature well with the uh, the color it's a wonderful piece it's a, a male piece that's adorned you know with beadwork and everything like that now, again, <laughs> if you move around just a little bit, I want to talk about this piece, pan around. This is Almitra. Again, a lot of color as well as texture. And it works well with the piece. I'm over-exaggerating in the shoulders. The shoulders are hunched. Very proud in the poise of this piece. Almitra was inspired through Galil Gabron's book, The Prophet. She was one of the, uh, she was the female figure that has posed a lot of uh, questions about life and death and marriage and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But all my work is, uh, I guess, has been inspired through life's experiences. People ask me, well, how long did it take you to, to make this piece, for example? And I have to explain to them, you know, well, you know, I'm 60 years old now and it took me exactly that long to get to this point. And, uh, and I'm, I'm serious, it's not a joke. I could not have done this piece 10 years ago. So, and this right here is Raxma. Again, I'm using uh, contour lines, stylized scarification. I'm contrasting with the lights and the darks. And this is, again, another adorned piece, which makes it work well. The, uh, the hair is braided. I'm actually corn rolling the clay to give it a really, really uh, textured look with the, uh, with the hair. Romilia there is a striped piece, tribal, very, uh, uh, people like to uh, call my, what I do, African art, I call it tribal because I'm not dealing with any particular group, region at this point. It's purely decorative in, in, in what I do. So I guess that's, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm open. So you know, they say, um, I don't know if most people know the, uh, the uh, painting on the body mm -hmm. was for warriors. They were going into war, you know, almost like the uh, Native Indians, they should say. Yeah, but in a lot of cultures, it was for for decoration too. Now, uh, this is uh, just for aesthetic uh, purposes. Particularly in this particular piece, I'm I'm following the contours of the body with the lines as you can see the lines follow the contour and then I'm getting I'm dealing with the contrast between the lights and the darks the hues you know from this turquoise teal you know that fades all the way down into a black and then it's adorned with the uh, complementary uh, ceramic beadwork so, you know, and that's familiar. I, I asked one of the ladies, I said, what did you, I said, what did you think about his work? And she said, it, it's, 
it comes out at you, she says it's kind of eerie. Well, uh, the, the work is, is very, very strong. And I, I get that a lot from a lot of people because here in, uh, from this whole Western school, we've been taught uh, to sort of like shy away from things African. And a lot of people, you know, uh, might be a little bit more comfortable if this were a Grecian statue. Maybe it wouldn't be so eerie. But I, I'm, I'm coming from uh, what I'm feeling, my life's experiences. And I do have to say that my work is not for everybody. It's very, like you said, it's very strong. Yeah. I feel the energy from it, you know. And so far as I just, all I saw was a, a photograph. Yes. And I said, wow. Yeah. I said, now this I have to see, you know. Yeah. So, well, that's the general response. It, it, it gives out a good energy for me. Yes. I, I, I love your work. Well, I want thank to you. I say uh, thank you for being on the show, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing some more of your work. Well, thank you again. Thank you so much.